You are Locked On Syracuse, your daily podcast on the Syracuse Orange, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So this game is different compared to the first two games. It's it's so obviously different for Fram Brown. And there's plenty of reasons, but the first one is that Syracuse, rather than being the hunter, they are now the hunted. Okay, teams are now gunning for Syracuse, specifically Stanford. Now, the Orange didn't play last week. Obviously, they were on a bye week. Heading into that week, they were 28th in the AP poll. They didn't play, and they somehow moved up in the AP poll. Now they're 27th. They're tied for 27th with, I believe, 62 votes. So they are knocking on the door to be a top 25 team in the country. So people are already starting to look at Syracuse a little bit differently than they did in the preseason. Now, we had a little bit more faith as Syracuse fans that we were going to be a pretty good team. But from the national perspective, not really. So now the eyes are on us. All right. And it's up to Syracuse as the hunted to live up to those expectations and hopefully move into the top 25 after this Stanford game. Syracuse is also a nine and a half point favorite at home on Friday night. And you can counter by saying, look, well, Syracuse was favored against Ohio in the first game, and it was by about 17 points. And my retort to that would be, look, Ohio is a MAC team. You're supposed to beat MAC teams. You're supposed to beat Group of Five competition as a Power Four school. And it was also unique because it was the first game of the season. And quite honestly, even though we had faith that Syracuse was going to be a good team, we didn't fully know what to expect until we saw that first game. Now we kind of have a good idea of how good this Syracuse squad can be. And it's up to them, once again, to live up to those expectations. So that's why it's different that they're favored this week than the Ohio game when they were 17-point favorites. And then in week two against Georgia Tech, Syracuse was the hunter. We were looking for that national respect. A ranked team coming into the Dome on a Saturday afternoon as the favorite, by the way. Georgia Tech was favored by a field goal in that game. And Syracuse proved a lot of people wrong. They stopped the run. Overall, they played a pretty clean game aside from the special teams. And they beat Georgia Tech. And the final score is not an indicator of how that game actually went. Syracuse controlled the pace of play. They were the better team throughout the game. But late miscues. And that's why you only have a 31-28 win. I believe that's what the final score was, if I'm getting it correct. 31-28 over Georgia Tech. So it's different in that regard. Now, Stanford, once again, this is a team that the Orange should beat at home on a Friday night on ESPN. This team was picked to finish last in the ACC preseason poll. Not near the bottom, not towards the bottom, not middle of the pack, dead last. Let that sink in. Dead last. Now, are they going to finish dead last? No, that's reserved for Florida State. Florida State just sucks, and I'm going to dunk on Florida State whenever I can. But you get the idea. This Stanford team is not very good. Yes, they have some dangerous players, which we're going to get to later on in the podcast, and they should be taken seriously because they're within our own conference. But you're a a nine-and-a-half-point favorite for a reason. At home, you are supposed to win this game. And the other reason also... Why being the hunted in this scenario is so big for Syracuse and why they need to pass this test. I think when you look ahead at Syracuse's schedule, you can see the path, or at least I can see the path more so than I did earlier in the season or even in the preseason. We all know that Syracuse had a quote unquote easy schedule heading into the year. In fact, I cited in the off season that ESPN gave Syracuse the easiest schedule in the power four. It looks even easier now. Let's be frank. The pathway is there for this team to exceed their win total that they were projected to have, which was seven and a half. And quite honestly, it's, it's there to be double digits. Potentially they could win 10 games. They could, it's right there in front of them. 
And this Stanford game is one that you want to be a 10 win team. This is one you got to win because you look at their schedule once again. Yes, UNLV is a tough one. But at the same time, I think we can all agree that that game is winnable on the road. No one's going to sit here and try to convince me that they can't win that game. They absolutely can beat UNLV on the road. At NC State, a lot of us thought that that was going to be one of the tougher games on the schedule. Not so much anymore. They're they're starting a true freshman quarterback in Clemson this week. Okay, that game has a potential to be a blowout. Now, if their true freshman C.J. Bailey happens to be really good and he lights it up against Clemson, we could check back on NC State on the road. But until then, it doesn't look as daunting going on the road to NC State. In fact, Syracuse might be favored in that game. I don't trust Pitt. I don't buy into Virginia Tech. At Boston College looks a little bit tougher than it did in the preseason. But still, that's not a game that you're going to try to convince me that Syracuse cannot win that game. They can win that game. So the pathway is there. There is a legitimate shot that this team could win 10 games, more so than in previous seasons. In previous seasons, they would get off to a hot start. And then you would look at their schedule and you see Florida State when they used to be good. And you would see Clemson. And yes, sometimes they would keep it close in those games. In 2022, they also had to play Notre Dame at home. And then slowly the the season would collapse. But in this scenario, the Orange can get off to a hot start and maintain it. They have more talent on this roster than they've had in quite some time. And we've been hyping it up for good reason. Syracuse is now the hunted. We are the team that teams are chasing now. We're just outside of the top 25. And if you win this game, you're probably inside the top 25. So overall, it is a unique challenge for Fran Brown and company. How can he prepare his team as the hunted rather than the hunter? Because as a hunter, it's pretty easy. You just put on the bulletin board material. This team doesn't believe in us. They don't believe. You get the idea, right? Georgia Tech disrespected us, right? You know, the experts say that we're an underdog team. Well, how do you prepare your team when you are the favorite? How do you prepare this team and keep them focused against a team that you should probably beat? Not probably beat. You should definitely beat in Stanford at home. So it is a unique challenge for Fran Brown, and it's the first one that he has had. He's a first-year head coach for Syracuse. He's a first-year head coach, period. We don't have data on him other than two games. I want to see Syracuse, just like all of you guys who are probably watching or listening to this and are Syracuse fans, I want to see them spank Stanford. That would be a very nice indicator of how Fran Brown, in the future, is going to have his team ready against inferior competition. Because that's what it is. We are the hunted, not the hunter. 